Hi, this is Amy Lewis. Amy, more makeup. This is Engineers Unplugged. Hi, this is Amy Lewis, and we're back for another amazing episode of Engineers Unplugged. We've got Ken and John, and we're going to be talking about Cinder. So uh, strap in. This is going to be a good one. All right, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Cinder, what it is inside of OpenStack, is it's a way to abstract and give you block storage resources. So what we've got here is we've got a Linux server, we've got it set up with Nova running on it, and we've got a VM, so there's our hypervisor. Over here, we have another Linux server that's running Cinder. It's got a volume group inside of it. It's running the Cinder service, and what we're going to do is go through and we're going to say, hey, I want a volume, and we're going to create a volume out of that volume group, and we're going to say, attach it to my VM. What's going to happen is, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach it to a mount point here on our Linux server and pass it in as a pass-through device into our VM, and voila, we have an attached block device. So I'll let Ken talk about that. Thanks, John. You talk almost as fast as a New Yorker. That's amazing. So, let me, so one of the great things about Cinder is how easy it actually is to get started. So let's say, for example, you happen to have an open stack platform running in your in your basement for some example. So here you have two controller nodes that control the OpenStack infrastructure and you have two compute nodes what we call hypervisor nodes that actually house your VM. And you go, you know what? I like to I like to attach some block storage to my VMs. And you happen to have a spare server just kind of hanging around. So it's very simple to get started. So you would take this server, attach it to your network and you basically need two networks. You need an IP network to do management, and then you need an iSCSI network to actually do the storage traffic. So you tie those together, and you run and you install a couple of services on your nodes. So here on the controller node, you have a Cinder API service and a Cinder scheduling service. And then on this spare server you found, you put the volume service, and that server has a bunch of storage behind it, and just by installing these services and, and activating them, you've now got a Cinder environment, and you can start taking the storage and then signing it out to the VMs through the iSCSI network. Now, that's a great way to get started, not a great way to run production. And the reason is, this, no this little simple Cinder node using commodity servers and storage, it's great to get started, but terrible when it comes to dealing with failures. So let's say this server goes down. What happens? Basically, you happen to be storing all of your family photos in Cinder, and it's serving it out through these VMs. All, your, all, your, uh, all those pictures become unavailable, which makes your wife very unhappy. So how do we get around that? Well, the, one way to do that is, you, um, is probably to buy an enterprise storage and stick it in your basement. Because at the end of the day, you cannot put two commodity storage together and have, and have HA or failover. So John's going to take over now and talk a little bit about how you attach an enterprise storage array and what benefit you get from it. All right, so the great thing, as Ken pointed out, you can start out with this model. Um, and as you grow and as things progress, you can add more to it. So one of those things that you can add is an enterprise array. So it really looks exactly the same. You end up coming in here, and you just add your enterprise array, and it works exactly the same way. The beauty of this is you still get to use what you already had. And all of this is seamless to the end user. All the end user knows is, hey, I've now got a larger pool of resources and things like that that I can use. So nothing changes from the overall perspective. And you can continue to scale this. You can just keep adding more and more nodes as you go. Those can also be additional LVM or commodity, or they can be enterprise. It doesn't matter, either one. So. All right, I like this, I like this, great information, but there's one more thing. It's sad when you lose your family photos, but it's really sad when you lose your unicorn photos. Right. So it's unicorn time, it's unicorn <laughs> challenge. Let's see you draw your best unicorn. Go, go, go. All right, I'm going over here. <laughs> there you go. The beauty of uh, the the beauty of open source, you can keep adding community contributions. Well done. <laughs> All right. Thank you, John. Thank you, Ken. And uh, we'll see you next time on Engineers Unplugged.